Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about testing characteristics, which is one of the more high yield topics on the uh, MBME exams. And this will be a little bit of a longer video, but I'm trying to cover a few important and testable concepts um, in this area. So most of these questions are going to start with a two by two table, such as the one in the upper left hand corner, where they'll tell you there are 40 patients who have a positive test result. Among those, 25 have, a, have the disease. There are 60 patients with a negative test result. Among those, 50 do not have the disease. Tell me the sensitivity, specificity, PPV, and MPV. And for these, um, I really like to get down to the definitions and really think about what are we actually calculating for each of these quantities. And what I really think about is in terms of conditional probabilities. So thinking of these in terms of probability of X given Y. So this line in between means given. And importantly, if you think about it in this way, you could always come up with the proportion that you need to calculate because the numerator will be patients with both X and Y, whereas the denominator will be patients just with Y. And I'll show you what I mean. So the technical definition of sensitivity is that it is the probability of, ha of getting a positive test result given you have the disease. So looking at this table, it is a probability of getting a positive test result given you have the disease. So in this case, it would be 25 over 35. If we then think about specificity, specificity is the probability of getting a negative test result given you do not have the disease. So in this case, it would be 50 over 65. And we can see that both sensitivity and specificity are dependent upon disease status. And therefore, when we're thinking of the denominator, it's gonna be those with disease for sensitivity or those without disease for specificity. And I think it's important to contrast this with PPV and NPV. So for, for PPV, that is the probability of having disease given you had a positive test result. So the probability of having disease given you had a positive test result. So we can see that for PPV, both PPV and sensitivity as a numerator, it's patients with the disease and with a positive test result. But the way that they differ is in the denominator. And again, it's because sensitivity is given positive disease and PPV is given a positive test result. Similarly, with NPV, this is the probability of not having disease given you had a negative test result. So the probability of not having disease given you had a negative test result. So it'd be 50 over 60. And similarly, we can see both in NPV and specificity, the numerator is patients who have a negative test result and negative disease, but the denominators are really what's different because specificity is looking at among patients without disease and NPV is looking among patients with a negative test result. And we can see while sensitivity specificity, we are looking at the columns, looking at disease status as a calculation. For PPV and NPV, we're really looking at the rows or the test result status in order to determine the uh, denominator. And then I'll say an, initial, you know, an additional um, value that they can have you calculate is the prevalence. And prevalence is simply the number of patients with the disease over the total number of patients in the sample. So in this case, it would be 35 patients because we see 35 patients have the disease over 100 people in the sample. So we get 35 over 100. And one important testable concept is how these testing characteristics change in the setting of changing prevalence. So let's think of a situation in which we increase the prevalence to 70%. In that case, when we're filling out the two by two table, we know that 70 patients must have the disease because the prevalence is 70%, and therefore 30 patients must not have the disease, assuming a sample of 100. The important thing to remember here is that sensitivity and specificity are inherent to disease status. 
And therefore, when we're changing the prevalence, we're not going to change the number of patients who get a positive or negative test result with, among those with disease or without disease. What we're really changing is the number of patients with different test results. And therefore, we can see that when we change the prevalence, the sensitivity and specificity stay the same. And the only things that change are PPV and NPV. And we can see by these calculations, again, PPV, probability of having, having disease given you had a positive test result, so 50 over 57, and negative predictive value being probability of not having disease given you had a negative test result being 23 over 43, we can see relative to the values that we calculate up above with a prevalence of 35%, we can see that positive predictive value went up, negative predictive value went down. So the relationship to remember is that prevalence is directly associated with PPV, which I remember because they're both with a P, and inversely associated with NPV, such that as prevalence goes up, PPV will go up and NPV will go down, and vice versa. The last concept that I want to talk about is thinking about how we use sensitivity and specificity and how they relate to PPV and NPV. So if we were to redraw our two by two table, and instead of putting numbers, actually just put in labels, we would say the upper left hand is our true positives, patients who, who um, have the disease and had a positive test result. The upper right hand would be false positives, patients who had a positive test result, but in fact do not have the disease. Bottom left would be our false negatives, patients who got a negative test result, but actually have the disease. And bottom right would be our true negatives, patients who had a negative test result and truly do not have the disease. And if we think about the way that we calculated each of these, um, each of these numbers, we see that as we decrease the number of false positives, we're going to be increasing specificity and increasing PPV. Because we remember that for specificity, for specificity, that is the probability of getting a negative test result given you do not have the disease. And PPV is among those with a positive test result, how many do have the disease? So it's how the probability of having the disease given you had a positive test result. So we can see in both of these cases, as the false positive rate goes down, specificity and PPV will go up. So it's important to remember that specificity and PPV will track with one another. And I always remember that because specificity has a P and PPV obviously starts with P. And one important feature that ties into a commonly tested concept is that higher specificity implies a lower relative proportion of false positives. And that's why we use high specificity tests in order to rule in or confirm disease. Because if a test is highly specific, that means there are low false positives meaning that if we get a positive result on a test, it is likely to be a true positive and therefore we can confirm the disease. And this is important if, we're, if the treatment for a disease is something that um, can cause a lot of harm. So for example, patients who are, being, patients who are screened positive for lupus will follow up with an anti-double-stranded DNA antibody because that is a highly specific test. And before we start someone on a severe immunosuppressant that can put them at higher risk for uh, infection, and even malignancy, we want to first confirm that they have the disease. And therefore, we'll do a highly specific test because we know if we get a positive result, it is very likely to be a true positive. Now thinking about sensitivity and NPV, we remember that sensitivity is the probability of getting a positive test result given you have the disease. and NPV is the, prob is the probability of not having disease given you had a negative test result. 
And therefore, we can see similarly that as false negatives go down, sensitivity and NPV should go up. And again, this is why we look for highly sensitive tests to rule out disease, such as with screening, um, you know, screening interventions. And it's because if we are using a highly sensitive test and get a negative result, because we know false negatives must be low, we can trust that the negative is a true negative. And this is important if we're trying to rule out disease in the population. So, you know, in summary, we talked, we touched on a lot of testable concepts regarding testing characteristics. Um, again, this is a little bit of a longer video, but um, hopefully it covered some important concepts. And I really implore you to take a look at some of the practice questions following this video to make sure that you really understand these concepts and to apply them in a way similar to how you'll see them on the MBME exam. Thank you and good luck.